what do you see as the future of natural healthcare? Um, you you decided you made this choice to go and do yeah. the that's that's an investment into into doing it. So you think your intuition kicked in and you were like, "There's something I here." Just, as we kind of come to a close, I've got to ask you one question. Mm -hmm. Your top five supplements, what are they? The ones that you recommend everyone should be taking. You've put me on the spot here. <laughs> David, where do I even start as an introduction to you? I have known you since 2016. I actually have the date on my calendar, 8th of March 2016 for our <laughs> well. first meeting. And I still remember like coming into into like what looked like a, a shop mm. and then your little office against the, <laughs> against the entrance to entrance door. Yeah, those are the days. Wow, wow. <laughs> and um, it's crazy because I've... I've known you for that long. I've pictured your, your brain on nutrition advice. I've pictured your brain on brain on, on like literal business advice. I've gone through so much in those years. And now for anyone that doesn't know David, he is the founder of Amrita Nutrition and Supplement Hub. And you've been going, I believe, since according to your website, since 2007. Mm -hmm. So you've been going a long time before I even, even met you. Yeah, yeah. And your journey's been incredible. You're like now in... You're now in the UK, you're in the Netherlands, you've now gone into Taiwan mm -hmm. and potentially in the USA yeah, very yeah. soon. Yeah. But it never really started like for you. You never were like in the wholesale business. If I remember when we first met, you told me you were a PT. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I have to pinch myself actually when I think about the journey because, yeah, the early days um, I was personal training, yeah, yeah. Um, always had a background in sports, so I uh, studied sports science, and then the next level was me to, to get involved on a one-to-one -one basis with clients. So personal training, yeah, which I really enjoyed. Um, did a lot of work with the Czech Institute, a lot of training with them, which I really respect, Paul Czech. Um, yeah, and developed a successful one-to-one -one personal training studio. Um, and initially, you know, things were going well. Um, but then I sort of had this dawning one day that I realized that there's more to health than, than purely exercise. You know, we're designed to move, yeah. you know, without doubt, and, and we're not exercising enough, and we need to do more functional exercise. That that's, goes without saying, but there's more to it, and the missing link for me was nutrition. And I was working on nutrition, very basic nutrition to start with, but then really realized I needed more than that. So... Um, I decided to go back uh, and went to a naturopathic college um, and got a postgraduate diploma in nutritional therapy. And I really liked it because it had a, it had a focus on Ayurvedic medicine too. So um, that was hard because tr trying to maintain my personal training business while doing my studying, traveling to York and, and, and doing classwork there and homework and stuff, it was, <laughs> it was a very yeah. challenging time for sure. Um, trying to keep everyone happy. But, but yeah, it was three years and it was a long journey. Came through the other side, really loved what I'd learned and um, started applying it with my personal training clients. And, um, and that gave the practice an extra dimension. And uh, yeah, we really moved, moved on from there. So um, you were kind of like giving, giving the PT, doing the full PT like course with them, yeah. but then you were also giving them nutrition advice and what supplements to take. That's right. That's in, I don't I've, I don't really see that much uh, from when from my personal experience. I've not really seen that much ha much happening in the past. No, so no, you, no. You were, you were the we were trying to of incorporate. That. Yeah, we tried yeah. to incorporate both, um, and yeah, it worked. It worked really well, and, and clients liked it, and we got more and more referrals from that foundation. Then we 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 moved premises. We moved to a more integrative practice, and we got the therapists. And uh, in the end, we had seven different therapists. Wow. So we ended up referring internally. So we had a sports injury uh, therapist. We had a reflexologist. We had a hypnotherapist. Um, <laughs> we, we had a chiropractor. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, that, that worked really, really well. Um, and then I started doing a bit more studying, a bit more research, and when I was researching, I was, I was getting into um, a lot of practitioners in the US and thought leaders in the US. And, um, and Dr. Datis Karazian was one of the first ones that, you know, I really started studying his work. Um, and that took me to some products um, 
that I thought these products could be really beneficial. I was seeing more and more autoimmune patients and um, immune system modulation, etc., and the work of Dr. Krasian and his, his work on immunity. And I thought, mm, there's some interesting products there, really interesting that I think could help my patients. Yeah. Proprietary blends, so obviously very different. Um, and I approached this company with, with a view to bring them in primarily for my patients. Um, and that was quite hard work trying to get that company on board. Um, is it so? Is that why you left being a PT and then came into creating Amrita or functional nutrition as it was originally known before? Yeah, I was seeing I was seeing more people with more challenge, more challenging cases, if you like. Yeah. So initially with PT, it was more um, dietary um, supplementation if required. You know, around some basic labs, finger prick labs on vitamin D and the basics. Um, so we use supplementation as and when required there. But then as I started moving away from PT and seeing more and more nutritional clients, I got more and more challenging cases. So as a result of that, um, an additional study, I started looking at bringing uh, supplements in from the, the US. Um, and that was a long story, if you've got time for that no, one. No, yeah, please, but, yeah, um, go, go for it. Yeah, we want to hear about this. But yeah, um, the first company I approached, can I mention the name? Yeah, go for it, Apex please. Apex Energetics, based in Irvine in California. Um, incredible company. But um, I think they'd had a bad experience with a previous distributor and uh, very, very reticent to get involved again with an overseas distributor. So um, they sent me a challenge, basically, and said, look, you know, we're really not that bothered about overseas accounts, but um, we'll we'll sort of see if you can do some of our training over in the US, and they run various training courses. Um, if you commit to those, get through those, I get good feedback from, you know, the, the lecturers and from the sales team. We'll have another conversation and see how it goes from there <laughs> so so they put you through their training program just to see like educate you on all the products that's that's a that's quite a good way of uh, looking at things because they basically give you the full background of all the products and all the training yeah and then we're like we'll have a discussion with you that's that's a really good way that's a really good way of putting someone through their product range and give them a good education on how they work yeah, the to be honest i think they set me this challenge thinking he's probably not going to commit to this you know it was four or five days in the US, four trips, you know, functional book chemist, you know, they were quite in-depth in courses, mm. uh, very challenging courses, you know, over and above what I learned in the past, certainly. Um, so, um, yeah, got through that. Um, financially, it was challenging too because it was a very costly exercise. Mm. You know, most of them were over on the West Coast, the courses. So, anyway, came through, came through them all. Really enjoyed it. Fantastic learning experience. Um, and then got in touch with them again and said, look, you know, I've basically done what you've asked. Um, I've done your training courses. Fantastic experience. And uh, they decided to go for it on a trial basis. So I had access to a limited, um, a limited amount of the inventory. Started bringing them in initially for my patients. No intention of supplying anyone else, you know. Um, got fantastic results with these products too they're really high end really excellent quality brilliant formulations um and um word gets around get to speak to people at seminars uh, conferences you've got apex and yes how are you getting apex in um and can we can we buy apex from you well apex have really strict distribution policies so you know, they will not sell direct to general public. It's got to be through a practitioner network. So interestingly, I had a personal training client who also did website design and development. So, so I did a contra deal and uh, 20 personal training sessions, and he built me the first basic platform. <laughs> so it was a contra deal. So um, it had to be password protected, and I had to verify practitioners when they had – opened accounts with us which i did which kept apex happy um and um yeah launched the site and um within the first month i'd signed up seven practitioners seven bear in mind now we have six and a half thousand practitioners so, so that wow. was the start 
that was the start. And it was October, first financial year. I think we did about £3,000. But from that, everything just rolled and rolled and rolled without me intuitively pushing anything. No marketing, nothing. Just word of mouth. Um, and business just steadily grew, steadily grew. And we started taking other brands on board, mainly US brands. And, uh, yeah, the growth just continued and continued. And it, it, to such an extent that I had to start moving out of the nutritional side of things and just purely focusing on the, on the business. But intuitively, I'm not a businessman, you know? Um, well, you could, yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah, you could, I, I you think... could argue differently because you, you decided, you made this choice to go and do yeah. the... That's, that's an investment into, into doing it. So you think your intuition kicked in and you were like, there's something here. I just, yeah, I just intuitively, I knew it was the right thing to do. But I was, I was more thinking from, the, from a patient's perspective mm. than anything else. I wasn't thinking about, you know, marketing it to other practitioners. It was purely, I wanted the best for my patients. And that's what all practitioners want. Yeah. Um, we want the very best tools, and, and at the time, I regarded these as the best tools. So um, that's where it all stemmed from, yeah. You, you really are like a practitioner first, though, aren't you? No matter what you do, it's one of the things that's really intrigued me about Amrita, and one of the things I still love about your company, is the fact that you're not just like a wholesaler. You're, you don't just go, right, I'll take this on, I'll take that on, mm. take this on. You will literally sit with the company, go through their products, and grill them. Yeah. And you'll say, right, is this product as good as they say it to be? Where's the data? Where's the research? Mm. And you will go through it with a fine tooth comb and then you'll recommend it. Because I know trying to get even Toxbrand into Amrita, you grilled us hard because you were like, right, tell me about Zeolite. We've got this spray-based one. What What's the difference what's between this? That's yeah, right. and I remember sitting through those meetings with you and that was, that was interesting because it allowed us to kind of answer those questions mm. but also think, think what are what is the average practitioner asking mm. and so do you think that's what supplement hub and amrit nutrition is or should we say just amrit nutrition yeah. is all about finding the right ingredient or right proprietary blend for the practitioner because you don't just take any brand on will no. you no and we get approached you know the bigger we've got the more we get approached by companies and certainly we turn down many many more than than we take on um but it's like that toolbox analogy I use a lot, you know. As a practitioner, you have a toolbox. Mm. Um, you have, you know, the dietary aspect of it, the food, which is vitally important. But also supplementation can be extremely important too. And, uh, you know, we have a toolbox of nearly 3,000 products. And when we onboard a new product, it, it's got to be something that gives us another angle that's been proven. Um and that offers something to what we already offer, um, not checking on just another generic supplement for the take of t taking it on because it sells well. Yeah. Um, there's got to be more to it than that. And um, it's really interesting, actually. A couple of weeks ago, we met um, um, Christian uh, Drapu, who uh, we met in Manchester. He travelled over from, uh, from the States, and stem cells is big at the moment. Um, stem cell injections well he's developed a product um which boosts stem cells naturally i was wondering why you look so young right now <laughs> that had that i was wondering i was like why is dave looking skin looking so um, good at the moment <laughs> now, now i know why <laughs> i actually have trial i actually have tried it and, and actually i do trial a lot the problem the placebo effect certainly doesn't work with me because i've tried so much stuff that it, it cannot it cannot work with me, but but interestingly, yeah, we we, we met Christian and uh, he was on his way to uh, a lecture he was doing uh, in Portugal. Um, but this is a product I'd, I'd shown interest in for a long time, and I've seen the development of the company, and I just thought it's a novel approach mm. because stem cells, you know, is flavor of the day at the moment. It's certainly we've seen incredible results with stem cells but also it's a bit controversial because where are the stem cells coming from you know mm. um so i thought this is a natural product that could potentially stimulate cell production so we met him a fabulous guy really impressed with him uh, he spent 20 odd years researching stem cells 
looked at the product and the ingredients in the products all proven uh, in research to boost stem cells. I thought the proof's in the pudding, I'm going to try it. Yeah. So I've always struggled with tennis elbow lateral epicondylitis. Um, I do a lot of exercise. I think I've probably Kinetic overdone towel. it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd overdone it. I still think I'm in my 20s when I'm in the gym, you know, and I'm heading for mid 60s now. So um, anyway, I've always had this reoccurring problem. So I thought I'll try this product. This will be the ultimate test for it. And it was because it did go. It did wow. go. So, um, yeah, sometimes I will actually trial the product. Um, because that, this, like, stem cells are repairing the muscle and the actual connective tissue, if I'm correct. And I've not looked into stem cells enough, mm. but if my understanding of it's correct, that's what it does, is it reheals and rebuilds that entire structure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's, it differentiates, you know, if you've got injuries to certain tissue... That, that tissue gives us messengers, uh, and as a result, the bone marrow produces stem cells, which differentiate into that very same tissue to allow repair to take place. Um, and it's literally every tissue in the body that's, that stem cells can, can help repair. Um, and uh, anything you can do to stimulate that process. As we age, obviously, stem cell production reduces inevitably as part of the aging process. And there's certain things you can do that boost stem cells. For example, fasting uh, can help. Um, dietary modification can help to a degree. Um, but yeah, the, the nutritional aspect of boosting stem cells really, really interests me. So that's what, uh, that's what that meeting was all about. Yeah, but I, I will, if possible, try and meet the suppliers. Mm. Find, dig, dig in a little bit deeper yeah. rather than just look at the surface product and, you know, what differentiates that product from the rest is, is a question I often ask and can be difficult to answer mm. sometimes. Because, like, looking at, you know, I was looking at your bio and I read through it and you said that your desire is to find nutritional supplements that are completely different. Mm. And so for you, how do you, like, differentiate what's a, a good supplement and what's not? Mm. Because you've seen a lot going yeah. through your desk. Yeah. So how do you do it? Because like I said, we work together quite a lot. And, yeah. and and I've always, I've never gone into generics at all. We've always been very select. So mm. how do you select it? One of the first things I do is, is, is or what can be really, really helpful, um, is look at who's behind that company. Mm. And that, change, that can change over time. And as a result, the product can change over time. Sometimes when their figurehead's gone, um, someone else takes over the helm, the product can change. The quality just the goes quality down. The quality can change. Profitability over quality, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, there's a big brand at the moment that potentially that could happen to. But, um, Ooh, yeah. Ooh, David's got a story. Well, no, no, <laughs> I, I'm a bit controversial. But I, basically, you know, for example, we took we took on um, Mother Earth Labs, okay, and the the guy behind uh, Mother Earth Labs is a guy called Dr. Hoover, Dr. Stuart Hoover. He's an incredible guy. Um, we had various conversations. I found out how fastidious he was about his formulations, um, the raw raw material ingredients, the testing they do, um, the unique ingredients he's got in it as well as fulvic and humic, which is uh, really important substances. And, uh, yeah, th that's another example of, you know, it just looks like, like a generic sort of multivitamin and mineral with, with some uh, polyphenols and other ingredients added, but, but there was more to it than that, and, and uh, that made it unique. It was also in liquid form as well, or many other formulas in liquid form, and that can be advantageous for many rather than encapsulated products. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it... Where we can, it's not always possible to speak to the figurehead, but where we can, we try, we try and find out more. And, and you then get a vibe about that company and if that's a company that you want to work with. Mm. Um, and sometimes you don't. Um, but, um, and our practitioners are really helpful too. They can point us in the right direction, you know, that they, they have a wide network all over the world and they will come back to us and say, look, you know, I've, I found a really good company specializing in this area. It might be worth you having a conversation with them. And they can be a really good referral sometimes because um, we can't know everything about everyone. And mm. there's so many companies out there producing really, really good products. Um, so, yeah, 
And that's helpful to the network we've got. So is, is that like, do you look at the formulations or do you basically look at the research that they have as well? Re or? If it's research-based, definitely advantage. Stem regen is a classic. You know, he'd got lots of research to back up what he was saying. Um, looking at the formulation specifically, looking at the quality control. Um, yeah, you know, there's, it's not just a matter of just signing on the dotted line and getting the distribution <laughs> agreement going. There's, there's got to be... What does it offer? Mm. What does it offer that toolbox? Yeah. That, that is it something that's missing at the moment? So I, I want to I flip the conversation a little bit and just ask, you mentioned stem cells. Mm. And stem cells hits into the biohacking yeah. region. Yeah. So I've got to ask David, in your opinion, what do you think of biohacking? Well, certainly it's a rapidly expanding area. There's more and more biohacking conventions. There's more people who love the research, really get into research and really get a lot out of it. And as a result, this community has developed. Interesting. I think, as with any community, there's extremes. I, I must admit, you know, the, the EU, our EU company has, has it got involved in a couple of uh, EU-based uh, EU biohacking conventions and they've been extremely successful. Mm. Um, we have some products that lend themselves to the biohacker community. Can I ask, um, like, what? Well, for example, some of the Quicksilver Dr. Shades products. <laughs> and and they, they tend to be attractive for that community. Yeah. Some of his formulations are. By the way, for everyone watching, I'm laughing because we both know Chris Shade. And he's I, an interesting I mean, He's character. an interesting dude. I've, I've had some controversial conversations with him, <laughs> and uh, let's just say we butted head many, many a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, what a marketeer Dr. Shade is. Oh, I, I called him on that. I met him at a conference actually at Vita Foods mm. many, many years ago. And I was like, Chris, you are one of the best marketeers yeah. I have ever met. And some of, the, some of the things you say and do, I'm like, that doesn't make sense. But, you know, that's a conversation for another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does these video clips for all his new products. And, uh, I mean, you just want to buy everyone on the back of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But, but yeah, there, there are certain products because of the nature of the products, because they're, they're fairly unique, they're fairly cutting edge. Um it attracts that community. Mm. Um, but s there is some quite extreme characters in that community too. Um, just finding the middle ground, I guess. Yeah, I think the biohacking community has grown. A lot of people are doing it. I read an article in The Guardian where they talked to some, um, they talked to a, what, this chap who classed himself as a biohacker mm. and he was using medication like metformin mm. to like control certain parts of mm. it and certain antidepressants mm. in a way because he knew that if he could literally hack that little bit of his genetics yeah. he could change the way he thinks and he was talking about like he won't have a relationship and the only point of like relationships are to change where your mindset works and mm. that's apparently now going into the biohacking mm. community but you kind of like bridged on the topic of fasting and I laugh about fasting quite a bit because I think fasting is something that we sh all should do. Mm. And I still remember we had a, we, we met in Milton, Ke Milton Keynes and I don't know if you remember that meeting we had. And I remember you told us about the, like, because you were talking about ancestral diets mm -hmm. and how, how we used to do things ancestrally. Mm. And, you know, at the start of this conversation, you mentioned the fact that, like, you know, we uh, are meant to move. Mm. There was a, a statistic that came out the other day that said that human beings now, we spend 90% of our time indoors. Mm -hmm. Now, how the heck does that make sense? How does that equate to our physiology and what we're designed to do? It, it doesn't, no. it doesn't, it doesn't. And like now you're seeing so many people trying to, do you think that in some ways some people are trying to supplement their way out of the basic things? Yeah, I'd say there are, there are people who do that. Um, you know, they'll, they'll eat a very poor diet and they'll think by supplementing that is, is, is sort of giving them some kind of insurance. Um, but fundamentally, if their diet is broken, you know, the nutrition they're putting into the diet is broken, supplements, it's not, it's not the answer. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's revisiting diet, exercise, the fundamentals. Um, yeah, I mean, it goes back to um, something that, um, I don't know if you've heard of something called metabolic typing. 
You've mentioned this in conversation before, but no, it's, it's, I've I've not read enough into it to to have a yeah. guess on it. Go on. Um, metabolic typing is is fascinating, and 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 a guy called Bill Walcott um, is is behind it, but it's based on Western Price principles. Um, oh, isn't he the de- dentist, Western Price? Dance, dentist. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for anyone listening, I'll link all the information for Western Price in the blog. I've got, yeah. I've got his book. So his, I'll link it his, below. Yeah. Uh, he's written a fantastic book. Mm. Um, the title escapes me, but basically it's degeneration. And, and basically it boils down to the fact that um, we're becoming more and more removed from our the diet that we're, we're meant to be eating. Uh, and he, he looked at um, races that, that still and, and tribes that still eat fundamentally uh, have eaten the same um, diet and, and it's not been influenced by Western society and um, how their health and well-being is that much better as a, as a result, uh, mentally and physically. Um, what was really interesting was um, the Inuits and you know, you're looking at their diet, which is a lot of whale blubber and saturated fat. And, uh, you know, the, the perception is in the Western world that saturated fat is our enemy. We shouldn't be eating it. Um, but they'd evolved to, um, to eat a, a diet almost entirely saturated fat. And yet they, they prospered and were extremely healthy. When they started moving into Western society and getting exposed to carbohydrates and, and modern foods, that's when their diet literally, that's when their health fell apart. So basically, you know, it's, it, it's trying to establish what diet suits you based mm. on your heritage. And that's, that's really important, really important. I suppose like the diet has now changed quite significantly. I was, um, there's this like social media influencer. Um, he was talking about like the um, Indian diet and the Indian heritage diet and how mm. we should eat to it. Mm. And, um, Someone like called him out on his social media, and they were like, "You know, you, you need to be careful what you're mentioning here," because he was m- mentioning you've shown these diet plans and stuff. But one of the main tags was rapeseed oil, mm. and like these seed oils, seed oils yeah. are going into everything, absolutely everything. And m- a lot of people don't understand the history of seed oils. And mm. I literally commented, I said, "Yes, the diets are like you know an Indian back diet of like having high amounts of ghee and all the mm. fat in it is mm. really really good." And uh, I appreciate where you're coming from, but what a lot of these companies have done have switched that ghee because they want to hit into the, you know, they want to hit the calorie counts as low as possible mm. or the you know the uh, unsaturated fats mm. in an account lower. So they substitute with rapeseed oil, mm. and a lot of many people don't know is that rapeseed oil has been in genetically modified. Mm. Even the organic stuff mm. is it the uh, 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 Oelic acid? Oleic acid. Yeah, oleic acid, sorry. Um, that they've genetically modified to bring it down. But what they say is, oh, it's it's still got it in there, but it's at small amounts. Mm. But hold up. If you eat it in so many different foods, mm. that content goes up and up and up. Yeah. And so your inflammation is just going to go through exactly. the roof. Highly inflammatory, those oils. And then yeah. the people now think that they're eating healthy. Mm. But like David, hummus... So you know hummus is a traditional mm-hmm. traditional dish for so many cultures, right? Mm. The basic ingredients are chickpeas, tahini, and uh, olive oil. Mm-hmm. Now it's um and it's sesame oil. It's mm. yeah, tahini, that's tahini, right? And then now it's like rapes oil yeah. being replaced in everything. Yeah. I I just I just don't understand. And then people now wonder why supplement the supplement industry is growing so much. Yeah, it's 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 scary you now. Ghee and tallow are, are staples at home. Mm. You know, the the fats that we're designed to eat. Mm. Um, it takes me back to uh, my personal training days. This actually, because um, one of my clients works for a company that uh, manufactures margarines, and um, he said, I, "You know, I, I was just um, talking to him about the importance of using butter and you know natural spreads." And uh, and he's he then mentioned that you know he was involved in the processing of, of of margarine, and he said, David, when it comes out the manufacturing process, it looks like grey plastic, <laughs> and then they colour it, you know. Oh, and I'm really? thinking, oh my god, people are putting grey plastic into their bodies. How can that be a good thing, you know? And it's touted as low fat, you know, healthy. How can that possibly be healthy? Um, 
Yeah, scary stuff. Yeah. Well, it's, as I say, I can't believe it's not butter, right? <laughs> the um, the low fat fad mm. was a big, big thing where they started talking about the low fat diets. Yeah, every product was like low fat, and I remember. I used to work at Tesco's, mm -hmm. so I remember how much low fat was like mm -hmm. a big, big seller in the cheese sections. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy is so many people didn't realize that the fat and the cholesterol, that link was completely different in what you needed. You actually needed that fat for the mm -hmm. cholesterol production, which also then supports with vitamin D synthesis yeah, and yeah. production and in the processing of the vitamin D. Yeah. And so you've got these people who just became sicker and sicker and sicker. But you know what always struck me was that like the our understanding of science changes and you know what we fail to understand is that as the research continues to continues to grow and grow and grow our opinions will change mm. and if you have if we have one opinion we can then discover it's completely wrong yeah but then people still will be like on that banging one opinion. on the same drum yeah. and it's like science yeah. moves on yeah cholesterol is a classic cholesterol um, there's a study recently come out, um, and LDL, you know, we're all this bad, good cholesterol. Mm. Um, you know, we're all obsessed with what, what's bad cholesterol and what's good cholesterol. The LDL, they're finding no correlation with LDL and, and coronary events. So there's more to it than LDL. And, um, there's particle sizes and there's, large fluffy particles and the small dense particles and uh, lp little a and aop aoepb um, are more important markers and they're the types of um, these small dense particles oxidize and it's the oxidation that's the problem it's the type of particle but we're so obsessed with hdl and ldl there's so much more complex than hdl ldl um, so getting your LP little a reading um, is much more important than the the LDL cholesterol. Um, but yeah, that's really interesting research. You know, LDL is not correlated, and yet we all think it is. Um, and then statins, you know, statins are high LDL, you need a statin, you know. Um, so... This goes totally against that. And, uh, you know, I know there's more to it, you know. Mm. Um, but, yeah, um, things change all the time. I mean, look at, I know, it's like, you know, uh, Azempic. Yeah. That's like the, the buzzword. Every social media platform, yeah. you go on, people are talking about Azempic mm -hmm. and saying how it functions. Mm. And if you listen to people like Gary Brecker, who are like, you know, the, the biohackers and do like the 10X side of things, yeah. They talk all about like how as they, they call it a zempic face mm -hmm. because you're you start to lose all the fat in your system. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at a zempic, you know, one thing that really struck me is like you're a PT now, right? You know, when you start to lose weight and you don't train, mm -hmm. like you don't train, fat doesn't go first, muscle goes mm -hmm. first. And so you're and like I've got people that I know who are taking it because of their diabetes. Yeah. And they look really, really good. Mm. But every time I look at them, I just go, have you lost weight? Or is it your muscle that's actually mm. gone? Mm. Mm. And it, what what makes me laugh so much is all these medical doctors now coming out against this MPIC. And the funniest thing that someone said is, did you know that they don't know what the side effects are? Yeah, exactly. They still They still monitoring the side effects. So you're telling me human beings are now being used as guinea pigs. Mm. So we're guinea pigs for the GLP one agonists. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that that. How does that make Scary. sense? You imagine if a supplement company did that. Yeah. If we said to people, we don't know how what the hell this is going to work, but we're going to use you as a guinea pig to see if this new nutrition is going to actually work. work but it's almost body. like a knee jerk reaction, isn't it? You know, this obesity epidemic is what can we do to quench that epidemic? You know? But we didn't ask the question what caused the no no epidemic? in the first place the yeah. question what what caused the obesity em, epi, uh, like pen, like pandemic or mm. epidemic or mm. how we want to call it mm. I mean you can't use the word pandemic anymore can we but <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> but yeah so you've got to ask those questions but we're not asking them no we're, we're saying what quick fix can we do to fit to, to to actually perfect it and get rid of it quickly exactly because we have I feel like hu the human race has become less patient. Oh yeah, yeah. It's immediate results, and and that that's the challenge for the 
the natural health industry is that the people expect and demand immediate results. Um, you know, when, to, when I talk to clients about their health, you know, I use that uh, Titanic analogy, you know, on the iceberg, in that the earlier you can start looking after your health, mm -hmm. the more, you know, that iceberg is, is, is your demise eventually, you know, where none of us live forever. That iceberg is your demise, but, you know, you can avoid colliding into that iceberg. You know, you can do things to slow the boat, the ship down. Um, and you can change direction. Um, and um, the earlier you start, the more chance you've got of doing that, you know. Um, it's not a quick fix, you know. Uh, and I, I see lots of people approach me when they're in their mid-60s, late 60s, early 70s. You know, they've had some results from their, their doctor. And... It's something, it's a process that's been going on probably for 20, 30, 40 years. Mm. But because that hasn't been identified early enough, they want, it's a knee-jerk reaction they want now to suddenly change their health around when if only they could have, you know, made the right decisions earlier in their life. Um, but it's very, it's very difficult to change things really, really quickly. It's almost impossible. So that's when they look at medication because medication could potentially in their eyes be the answer the quick fix that the we quick fix need yeah it's um it's scary to think that we look at it like that as well mm. like we just we've seen where our body's gone for you know years and years of abusing it mm. and then it gets to that point where we're like oh actually i better just take this medication to get rid of it very mm -hmm. quickly where we know that lifestyle changes can have you know have such a massive effect on they the system can make a massive effect uh, i mean in america they're looking at various drugs um that that is designed to bring out you know that mo that uh, lipid i talked about uh, lp little a and um these drugs are super, super expensive. They're designer drugs that have been de designed to bring that down. The challenge with that, that particular lipid is um, it promotes atherosclerosis for sure. Um, but it's genetic. A big proportion of, of, of people have a genetic trait to mm. having high LP little a. Um, and um, it's estimated up to around 20% of people. So... Drugs companies are focusing in on that and, you know, developing drugs that will, will bring it down. Enormously expensive drugs. But actually, if you look into research, nano emulsified curcumin has a dramatic effect on LP little a too. But you'll be, see very little research on the benefits of this nano curcumin. The drug will be the, the highlighted topic, you know, the... the it, it, it's the challenge that the that the, the the our industry has got in that there's no research there's no because drug companies will spend a fortune on research sponsored research a lot of it you know our challenge is we cannot meet the demands of that research in the natural health industry it can be really challenging for these companies you know you you say that i remember we met a company who were working in heart health and cardiovascular health mm. And they had a, a it was the sh the shells from I want to say krills. Mm. They ha they found that because obviously when they were producing all of the prawns and the krills mm. from, from from Iceland, mm. that when they had the shells being wasted, mm. and then a researcher I think it was in the University of Norway discovered that there was a peptide in the shell which mimicked statins, mm. so it had the exact same natural effect, but mm. none of the side effects of statins. Mm. And they they did the an RCT proved it and then patented it it always made me chuckle was the fact that there are natural approaches out there but we don't even look at them or consider mm. them mm. and i think we're trained to not look at them as well we are in some yeah. ways. conditioned almost not to look at them mm. you know the, um you know that i guess you can look at a health system in two ways um you know the the national health system is brilliant for people who need it uh, and it has a role for sure, but for some people, it's sort of it's sort of a crux. And why why do I need to take ownership of my health? Because the NHS will sort me out. Mm. But that you can't wait for that. You've got to take ownership of your health. 
you cannot rely on the health system to do that. And I, I think there's some people's mentality is that, you know, to rely on the health system and to not take the steps that, to manage their health so that they can avoid potential illness later in life. Mm. It's, uh, yeah. It's scary, like, because even now, like, colds and flus are being, are, are, people are going to GPs for, like, colds and flus because they're struggling with it. Mm. And um, I, I'll tell you a funny story. I had a flu a couple of years ago, and I went to my GP and I said, like, oh, I've got, f I feel so rough, my mm. fever's really heavy. And he prescribed me antibiotics. Mm. And I remember looking at the GP and I went, hold up, why are you giving me antibiotics? This isn't a bacteria infection. This is a virus. Mm. And he went, he just kind of like stared at me and he went, just in case. Mm. And I was just like, what are you doing? Mm. Like, you're just, you're prescribing antibiotics for a virus. Mm. But what I wanted to see is like, is my fever okay? Like, can I continue as normal? Is there anything you'd recommend? And I was naive at the time. I didn't know anything about the nutrition industry. I wasn't, wasn't you know, I wasn't up to date with mm. everything was going on. And I remember thinking that was bonkers. And then I met, like Dr. Lars von Olaschik and Lars said to me, um, I can't remember whose research it was now, but they said that if you took one gram of vitamin C mm. per hour, er, on the hour, every mm. hour, and then you took, I'm going to say 10,000 IUs of vitamin D, yeah. and I'm not telling people to do this before anyone says, Dilly's telling people to do this, I'm not telling you to do this, mm. but he said if you could do that and you took it every single hour, you could literally get rid of the cold or flu yeah, within yeah, yeah. a day. Yeah. And I didn't believe him. And then I tried it. Mm. And it is my go-to go to now. But we don't obviously don't recommend it to people because mm. you can't, because that's controversial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the research is there. Yeah, but it's yeah. been lost. Yeah, I'd probably throw vitamin A into the mix as well there. But but yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and it's the disruption of the microbiome by prescribing the antibiotic. You know? I mean... Antibiotics are so powerful, and, and we do need them. In certain circumstances, we need them. But uh, yeah, in a case like that, wow. Um, another thing is, you know, antibiotics, probiotics. Have you ever heard a GP say to you, well, after the course of antibiotics, follow up with probiotics? No. Yeah. Never, ever heard that. Never, ever heard it. But fundamental, absolutely fundamental after a course of antibiotics. Um yeah. So I've got to ask, how do you compete with all these big companies? Because like, when I say big companies, like these big nutrition supplement companies, mm. so you've got like Nestle who have mm. bought out the big, because when they see a company do really, really well, mm. how do you compete with them? Because they, they've got some really big marketing budgets to push their supplements. They have. Um, and yeah, it's, it's it is a challenge. The the one thing we we do is you know we're big into education, so we make sure we educate our practitioners um, on the unique attributes of a certain product or a certain brand. Um, it's becoming more and more challenging because the big players are becoming bigger and bigger, and also big farmers takes trying to take a stake in in uh, you know natural health too, supplement companies too. Um, because it's a threat, but also it's an opportunity. And um, they don't want all their eggs in but one basket, so we're, we're finding more and more of the pharmaceutical companies taking interest in, in supplement companies, which makes it even more challenging then. Um, the only way, in effect, you can compete is stick by your philosophy, stick by your morals, and... and Ultimately, if those products no longer meet the high standards that they originally met, mm. you know, we've got a commercial decision to make. And ultimately, um, you know, we've got to think of our practitioner base. We've got to think of our patients. And we might have to let go. You know, we might have to let go, which is a very difficult decision to make sometimes. But, um, but sometimes it's got to be made. Mm, it's interesting that. What, so what do you see as the future of natural health care? Because um, you, you've seen, you, you're hearing from other companies, you're seeing every company's marketing strategies and you're seeing mm. what they're up to. Yeah. What do you think the future is? Because you're, now you're, as you kind of grow internationally, you're going to be exposed to a lot more different companies as well from different regions. Mm. Um, I, see, basically, we, we've, got, we've got a spectrum 
of audiences. We've we've got the people who totally discount um, the natural health industry, you know, and ha have been totally conditioned by um, allopathy and and uh, drugs companies. Um, and we've got the other extreme where you know people are truly searching for natural options and will take proactive approaches in that respect. And there's a middle ground, and that I see the biggest sway in the middle ground. I see there's people who who have no opinion either way, but they're starting to gravitate towards natural uh, alternatives. What's behind that? I think. I think they're seeing sometimes the failures of certain drugs, certain vaccines that were touted as being the answer, and they're not. So they're being a little bit more analytical in in their decision making, and as a result, they're seeing the natural health industry as being a potential solution, and they're giving it a go. You know, they're looking for true alternatives. Um, and that's been the success of our company. We're, we're, we're growing. The, the whole sector is growing enormously. And I think it's that, that middle ground, and I think it's the sway towards what we're trying to achieve. Um, and more and more companies are devoting more and more effort into sourcing, uh, developing products which are niche products, many of them, but, but they're having... Um, they're having real, um, they're making real inroads into uh, some common health complaints. Uh, there's, there's one company w we work with, actually, and it's really interesting in that um, circulation is a, a big issue, you know, ensuring we have efficient circulation. And Big Pharma tends to concentrate on the macro circulation, so the large vessels. Um, but that's literally 2% of our total circulatory system. Um, the microvascular system is is 98% of our circulatory system, which is totally ignored. Um, and there's there's quite a few companies that are wor we're working with that are working on improving the microvascular system. And that's super interesting. And the, how they're evaluating the, the success of... There's, there's certain ingredients, uh, there's certain polysaccharides that, that feed. Um, there's, there's, I don't know if you know, ins inside the vessel is this tiny, t tiny hairs um, called uh, the glycocalyx. Are you familiar with that? No. And, and we didn't know about them, I think, probably 20 years ago. These, you know, they, you have to use electron microscopes that really, really increase the size of the image. And inside these vessels, there's these tiny, tiny little hairs, which facilitate transport of uh, nutrients in the circulation, red blood cells, white blood cells, through. And um, drugs, certain drugs, certain lifestyles, um, stress these tiny little hairs stop growing and instead of it, it them being situated quite densely in the inside of the vessels, it, it becomes barren. And as a result then, these vessels become blocked. And as a result of that, the microcirculation starts to fail and, and tissue is not getting the oxygen and the nutrients that it requires. And um, this one company has developed this device um, that you put under your tongue and it illuminates your tongue with this red light and they take a, um, an image of that and, and that image comes up on a screen and it basically scores your microvascular system based on this image. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. So you get a score, a percentage score uh, and then you take the product, you take it for three months and they do it again and you see the score improve dramatically. And you see the microvascular system improve dramatically on the back of this because the tongue is actually a representation of the microvascular system and the rest of your body. But then you speak to the patients who've been on the product for three months, and if you notice any changes, we obviously see 
these changes? Do you notice any changes? And they'll say things like, my foggy thinking, you know, I used to get foggy thinking all the time. I'm, I'm thinking much more clearly now. I start to get, I got cold extremities sometimes. That circulation certainly improved to my lower extremities. I can go on the treadmill a little bit more intensely than I used to in, when I'm doing my fart leg training, you know. Mm. So, yeah, things like that. Getting involved in things that are a little bit away from mainstream can be, you know, an area of success for, for our industry, for sure. Do you, do you think, like, the, the future of the healthcare industry now is looking at, like, being able to prove your supplement works mm. and to be actual give people tangible data? Yeah. Because I think it, it does seem like a trend is going that way now, isn't it? Definitely. The, the problem for the industry is that, you know, if it, research is super expensive, you know, and big trials, um, you know, wh when you've got enough people, you have to have enough people in that trial to, to, for it to be a valid trial. They can be very, very expensive to run, very expensive. A drop in the ocean for a, a drugs company, but, but for a supplement company, it can be challenging, and that's one of the biggest challenges. I think that challenge is something that we have to face, though, a little bit as well, because it's something that we have to, you know, provide evidence and prove Absolutely, for. it has to be evidence-based. It yeah. has to be, because if you're just kind of like bringing out a supplement because you mm. think it's right, yeah. that's that doesn't that's not a good yeah. thing, because yeah. we've seen it a lot recently yeah. where companies are just bringing out generic supplements and bringing out, Amazon's packed full of them. Yeah, yeah. Type in vitamin D, there's everyone's just basically racing to zero, I'd like mm. to say, because they're trying to add like more capsules or tablets into it. And I don't think many people actually understand if these products are actually working. Mm. And so I think, I don't know, in my opinion, I think that move towards providing evidence-based supplementation yeah. is going to be the future. What do yeah. you think? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, a classic is probiotics. You know, probiotics can be can be super effective the right strains used in the right way but every supplement company has a probiotic in the range they're not experts in probiotics you know there's there's companies that are true experts the likes of nature and true experts in probiotics and um they've jumped on the bandwagon of probiotics so they have a probiotic in their range mm. for the sake of having a probiotic in the range um d2 D three K two is a is a classic, isn't it? You know, suddenly Ooh, there was a bit of research. <laughs> suddenly there was a bit of research about about the benefits of well, the potential issues associated with taking uh, vitamin D alone, and calcium levels building up in the blood, and then how are you going to clear that calcium out of the blood? K two is the answer. So let's let's make a generic D D three K two product um but obviously there's a lot of research since saying the opposite of which obviously we've talked <laughs> you about know that. <laughs> yeah um, we talked a lot Kelsey about Vidal and uh, and, <laughs> and and your product but literally it was like a surge wasn't it you know one or two companies started marketing this unique dk2 product and then suddenly everyone had got one in liquid form, in capsule form. Spray forms. Spray forms. Um, it just swept like wildfire through the industry. And um, did people look at the research or did people just launch that product because the competitors had launched the product? So you know when we launched our product, the Vitamore D, I did the research because I spent a lot of time going through that before we launched. And we, and I remember you emailed me and you said, Dilly, Everyone's asking about Everyone's the K2. asking about it. And then when I actually put the papers across and I said, have you actually read the data in K2? And I think a lot of people don't understand is that K2 needs vitamin D to become effective, mm. not the other, way around. the other way around. But for some reason, we've been telling the story that if you take vitamin D, you have to have K2. Mm. No, it's the other way around. If you're taking K2, you need vitamin D. Yeah. And yeah. I think that, and the calcification, the research shows that vitamin D3 in itself prevents calcification of the arteries. So I, I don't know how these It's gone full circle, out. hasn't it? But but yeah. So, sometimes my sceptical head tells me, has that manufacturer actually 
found this research and thought, there's an opportunity here. You know, maybe not validated the research enough. Maybe. And then thought, let's market this. This is unique. This is unique. We've got an opportunity. Maybe. <laughs> I, I won't say there's a couple of uh, companies that we, we, we look where they look at the opportunity and they'll just go, right, you know what? I can jump on this bandwagon. Mm -hmm. I, can, I, can do, I can do this. So, right, as we kind of come to a close, I've got to ask you one question. Mm -hmm. Your top five supplements, what are they? Ones that you recommend everyone should be taking. Uh, I'd have to, I'd have to uh, qualify that a little bit because at my age, there's a top five that I take. Okay. And at your age, there's probably a top five that you might want to take but they're different. Um, and they're different because I'm at a different stage of life than, than you are. Yeah. Um, so as you get older, certain things happen. Um, you know, one thing I'm concerned about because, um, for example, viscosity. As you age, blood gets thicker. You know, organs get less efficient at filtering blood. Viscosity increases. A big priority for me is to make sure that my blood is of the appropriate viscosity. So for me, natokinase is, is really important. And also there's a lot of recent research on natokinase saying it, it does actually help break down calcium deposits inside the vessels. Oh, interesting. Fairly new research, but it's been proven, you know, um, high quality research. That for me is important for you probably not as important um so that's one that microcirculation that i talked about that's important for me maybe not as important for you at your age for the very same reason you know the, the filtration processes the long-term process of oxidation um so microvascular system is important to me um but then we look at um the others and um you mentioned about seed oils. You mentioned about getting healthy oil in. Um, so probably number three would be fish oils. But then there's fish oil and there's fish oil. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you're taking a fish oil that's oxidized and it's poor quality, rancid fish oil is as bad as seed oil, you know? So you've got to be... You've got to really do your research and make sure the fish oil you're using is a high, ultra high quality fish oil, um, and where they're sorting, sourcing the, the oil from and the processing, etc. So fish oil. Um, next one on my list. I'm trying to think between uh, you and me. Vitamin D is definitely definitely up there. Um, you know, we're, for the you mentioned, we're spending most of the time indoors. You know, we're not getting exposure to the sun. Uh, vitamin D is so so important. That pro hormone is so important for many many reasons. Uh, I had a I had a patient actually six months ago, um, suffering really badly with depression, um, taken as as you know. Doctors do try one antidepressant, see how you get on with that one, see if it works. Um, she reacted badly to a lot of them. Um, some worked a little bit better than others, but I took a finger prick of a vitamin D and a single, single digit vitamin D. Wow. So just put it on your product. Um, immediately notice the difference immediately notice the difference and um, she visited actually about a couple of weeks ago different person totally mentally emotionally a different person it wasn't a lack of serotonin that was the problem it was vitamin d that was the problem um so there's a lot of people like that a lot of people we like lack like sunshine we the so sunshine is the happy happy sunshine you see the sun you get happy Exactly, exactly. For me, CoQ10. I think CoQ10 is really important. Um, CoQ10 production endogenously reduces as we get older. I think for the aging population, um, CoQ10 is really, really important. Um, 
you know, that's something I take in relatively high dose. There's so many products. And I'll be honest, there's a lot I take. You know, I do take quite a bit of stuff. Um, but there's always a story behind it. There's always a reason why I take it. Um, well, come on, your last one, your last top five that you would recommend for your age group that you would for say... For my age group? Or even just for generally, like what someone somebody should be taking... You put me on the spot here. <laughs> I'm good at that. The thing is, I tend to I tend to think from the client's perspective, you know. And the thing is, in most cases, that one product won't fit all, and and people have unique requirements. I'm a big fan of curcumin. It has fantastic anti-inflammatory properties. Um. It has, you know, it's it's helpful with 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 blood. It, it brings inflammatory markers down. There's a lot of inflamed people out there. Um, I think curcumin, provided it's the right type of curcumin and it's curcumin that's absorbed well. Um, there's a lot of curcumin out there that's poorly absorbed. It's poorly absorbed in the digestive tract. Um, so that'd be pretty high up there too, to be honest. Okay. What I'll do is I'll um. I think what would be good will link in the description your top five supplements mm-hmm. that you would not recommend, but you take personally and you talk about. And I think a lot of people would really enjoy reading that. David, I can't thank you enough for this conversation. There's so much more I want to pick your brain about <laughs> because I can see there's so much research and data that you've read through over the years. And I think there's a lot more to kind of like to your brain that meets the eye. <laughs> <laughs> I feel say, but uh, just to ask if, Anyone wants to reach you and wants to talk to you, wants to ask you which natokinase you take, for example, mm-hmm. or which vitamin D you take, how would they get in touch with you? Um, probably best via email. Yeah. So I'm sure you can share my, my email. Okay, cool. I'll share your yeah. email. And then a link just to the, to the uh, Functional Nutrition website. And Yeah, to, um, I'm reaching Nutrition. There's a contact page there. Um, so you could certainly get hold of me through that contact page too. And people can join as a client as well if they wanted to uh, take you on as their practitioner. Yes, yes. Um, that's one thing we are noticing, actually. Uh, we're taking on many, many more practitioners on a monthly basis than we ever did do. So we're doing something right. Yeah. You know, that gives me reassurance because our audience is practitioners. Um, and if practitioners are happy, they're recommending to fellow practitioners. So we're seeing those numbers dramatically increase, which gives me great confidence. Amazing, amazing. I'm really looking forward to continue following your journey and the company's journey. I'm excited to see where you guys are going to be in the next 10 years. The one thing about this industry is you'll never get bored. <laughs> uh, you'll never, ever get bored. The, there's always some challenge. Yeah. Um, but also there's always some new avenue that opens on the back of research, on the back of product development. Um, there's never a dull moment, that's for sure. As you, know, as you well know. As I very much well know. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. David. No problem. Thank you for having me. No problem at all.